Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our talks with Wald as we are referencing our reading through the deathbed edition of Leaves of Grass. We are in the section that's referred to as the children of Adam and we now are coming to the last six short offerings. And we're going to be reminded, do you guys remember what we were messing with when we were at the end of inscriptions and we had that those really brief little poems, two or three line poems, remember the one called To You and the other Thou Reader. We're going to play very similar kind of game at the conclusion of Children of Adam with a little poem called I Am He That Aches With Love. That's what we're turning to. Now, now our assumptions are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down the left hand side, Talks with Walt, all the way from the very beginning and inscriptions up and including through Oh um, uh, Hymene, Oh Hymene. And uh, which we just did, and now we're going to turn to this little poem, I Am He That Aches With Love. Now, Norton's will tell us in terms of background information that this originally was the number 14 poem of Children of Adam's group in 1860, and it took its present title in 67, and then it remained unchanged except for the addition of the word amorous in the first line, a, poem, a, a word that obviously uh, Whitman loves and, and, and is, will use a number of times in Leaves of Grass. I Am He That Aches With Love. Let's just point out right away that I am construction that he loves so much, which takes us back to Exodus 3, 14, I am that I am, right? I am he that aches with amorous love. Does the earth gravitate? Does all matter aching attract all matter? So the body of me to all I meet or know. Now, some will argue this is just not a poem. I'm sorry, I just see this as Whitman's getting bored, and so he throws together some things for filler. I, I think the Whitman's a little more sophisticated than that, and I think he's playing around with some really interesting questions. First of all, of course, the word ache we've already seen from pent-up aching rivers as part of, of course, Children of Adam and the, and the reading of Children of Adam and the notion of aching do kind of go together. And the word ache itself is a fascinating word etymologically, right? In terms of its origins and the notion of the pain and the suffering that produces a certain kind of benefit. Notice he says it. I am he that aches with, notice, amorous love. He intentionally put the word amorous there, this word uh, that will elicit not just a certain sexual rendering, but as well a certain kind of friendship rendering as well, right? And then he begins with these interesting two rhetorical questions. We've seen this. He loves to use the rhetorical question. These echoes will resonate through already from earlier readings in Leaves of Grass. Does the earth gravitate? It's a funny throwaway question unless you really give it some serious thought, right? This idea of the new science that, of course, Whitman was so impressed by and the question of the notion of gravitational pull as being natural, you would, never, you would never have any shame about the fact that the earth and gravitation happen. Obviously, he's making this kind of understanding as it relates to amorous love, right? And then he asks a second time, does not all matter aching attract all matter? And of course, because we've been reading closely Leaves of Grass to this point, we recognize that adhesion and attraction is fundamental to our reading of Leaves of Grass. Then he'll come to the word so, and we recognize he's playing around with a legit, with a, a, a certain kind of logical syllogism, a three-line syllogism. That is to say, he will end with the word so as if he's making some kind of an argument for poetic necessity, and in that moment, he makes himself the great poetic synthesizer. So. The body of me, you'll remember from passage 48, I have said that the body is not more than the soul, and I said that the soul is not more than the body, and nothing, not God is greater to oneself, than, to, to greater one, than oneself is. He's playing the same kind of game. So the body of me to all I meet, or no. He'll end, of course, with epistemology, right? I think philosophically, Whitman's doing some really pretty sophisticated kind of game playing here in the three lines. I know that he had to have probably been smiling when he offered this as a poem. And yet, what is it that he is actually saying? Well, the poet is the great synthesizer, the great sponge, the, the one who is attracted to everything. Somehow he wants to know more, she wants to know more about everything. 
Ed Tooby, obviously, the power of a rhetorical question, and I think he's playing around with early, even, even Aristotelian thinking here, especially with that word so. If we've, if we've read any Aristotle, we go, oh, he's playing around with some interesting kind of game stuff going on here. Or uh, Francis Bacon's New Organon, and since we're there at 3A, think about the ways in which Tennyson's Ulysses will say it this way, I am part of all that I have met. In all experiences, an arch where through gleams that untraveled world whose margin fades forever and forever when I move. How dull it is to pause to make an end, right? And we'll, we'll stop there. But just hear those lines and hear this game that's being played by Whitman in terms of aching, how dull it is to pause to make an end, to rest unburnished, not to shine in use. Right? As though to breathe were life, life piled on life were all too little. And of one to me, little remains. But every hour saved from that eternal silence, something more bring up new things and violet one for some three sons to store and harm myself in this great spirit. Remember these lines? Yearning with desire to follow knowledge like a sinking star beyond the utmost bounds of human thought. We've exegeted these lines elsewhere at Learnstrong.net. The point I want to make is I think that you definitely have some Tennyson standing right there um, in, um, to, to be read along with Whitman in that moment. Finally, in 3B, it's a fairly obvious question for a little poem like this, but what most attracts you? To what are you most attracted and somehow you want to know more about it? I hope that your reading of Leaves of Grass is in fact becoming that very thing for you. Thank you.